Hello and welcome to the Fan Zone. We've got, hopefully, with technology all being correct, this will be going live out on social media, so we've already warned Lee not to swear. Um, but welcome to everybody watching. Um, I will be asking anyone if they've got questions because we have three wonderful guests with myself and Bobby. We have the brilliant team who have won us so many medals out in Tokyo, the brilliant paradressage team. Uh, we've got Sophie Wells, we've got Lee Pearson, Sir Lee Pearson, sorry, and Georgia sorry. Wilson. Um, guys, thank you so much for coming to join us on the couch here at the new fan zone at the Nationals. What do you think of our fan zone, guys? It's brilliant. It's good, isn't it? It's, really it's nice. great. Um, so first of all, congratulations on fantastic success out in Tokyo. Um, Sophie, I'm going to start with you. I've got so many questions. Georgia, we're going to get to David Beckham and you in a bit because you hold fire, guys. She's mates with David Beckham now. Um, but Sophie, not your first Paralympics. Um, but going out there with a team that we've won gold. We were always expected to win gold. Let's face it, you are gold medalists. We've, but this time, young horses, not the horses maybe that were planned to go on, especially for yourself. Um, the expectations of gold weren't actually there, were they? No, I think it was really nice, actually. I think we all agreed how nice it was going out to a Games and not having the pressure to win the gold medal. I mean, obviously, we all wanted to. That's always, you know, we're training for that every day. But we, in realistically, the, the other teams, the Dutch, the Americans, they were so strong going into it and we hadn't been able to compete against them and know where we were. Um, and taking new horses, inexperienced horses, you know, mine hadn't even left the country. Um, yeah, I think it made it a lot more enjoyable, <laughs> which was quite nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, the most amazing moment when when it was confirmed that we'd got the gold, um, it, I did feel quite a lot of pressure going last, especially when it wasn't going to plan in the warm up. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just so, so pleased and proud to have been on that team. And the golds are here, people. I have a gold. I'm very excited about And they're very heavy. And uh, I've been told by Winnie, um, I don't know if you guys know this, if anyone wants to come up and meet the guys afterwards, they, uh, they're they very open to it and come and see some golds I'm, up I'm front. Keep I know, this. like Bobby and I are literally not letting go of these. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I know, they're amazing. Um, Lee, Sir Lee, um, do I need to curtsy? <laughs> There's a rude answer to that, but you told me not to be rude, so I won't be. But, Bobby, if you run off of that, I am like a galloping human, and I will chase you down. <laughs> it's on, Lee, it's on. <laughs> um, anyone watching on social media, I can see it's up on the live. If you've got any questions, I've got my iPad here, so if you've got any comments for these guys, or just want to tell them how wonderful they are, um, do send your uh, messages in, and I can read them out. But, Lee, um, you have 14 gold medals. I mean... The Paralympic. Paralympic medals. Europeans or Worlds. I know, and then it's something like 40, isn't it? Um, Neither, I, think. I don't know. It's a lot. There's a lot of silverware and goldware in your house. Um, how did these games feel in comparison to ones you've been to before? How did it feel going into them, knowing the postponement of it, COVID, the tricky year we've had, but also first time ever going in not expecting to win a gold? How did it feel going out there? I think for the athletes, I mean, we were more concerned about equine herpes around the world than we were COVID, to be honest. And I think from a training and even a competing aspect, it wasn't uh, in the living aspect. We stayed in a hotel uh, near the power, near the uh, venue, the, the uh, equestrian venue. It was, I didn't find it that different than any other games because people, people are, oh, well, you can't go sightseeing, you can't mingle with the public, but you can't normally do much of that anyway at games. And it is a case of get up, eat, train, repeat until competition days, really. So I didn't find it that different, did, did you, really? No, I mean, I think we, were in, we weren't in the village this time, so that was quite different. Um, but actually, it was quite nice us being with our support team because normally we're so separate from everybody else. Um, so at least we were able to be with our support team. And actually, we, I think we bonded as a team much better as an overall massive team, there was 18 of us, I think, in total. So the four athletes and then all the support staff. And there wasn't there wasn't one ego out there at all. And I mean, um, like even the vet was changing waters and skipping out, and that's unheard of before. And um, it, 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 like Sophie touched on, there was no pressure on us. Uh, my game plan was to stay within the white boards. That was literally my game plan because my horse is a homebred. Bree Breeze is a homebred. He's very nervous, really, of the world, but he's got phenomenal paces and a and an engine and a work ethic. But he is quite frightened of the world. So I, if I came home with 
any medal of any colour, just the one. I was that was my that was my plan. I would have been very happy with that. And then we get out there and we get competitive, and we want to take on the Americans that have been saying how amazing they're going to be for, for the last three years, five years. And um, Georgia, first time championship, going with these guys. How did it feel going out with these guys? Obviously, I'm sure you've seen them, the medals they've brought home before. How did that feel being on a team with such legends of the sport? Uh, yeah, just they have loads of experience, so they just know what to do all the time, and we pretend <laughs> to know what to do. <laughs> uh, you know, Sophie, you train with Sophie. Yeah, um, yeah, she's just helps me endlessly and I couldn't do it without her <laughs> and I just can't, I'm sorry your horses are wonderful but your little horse oh my goodness and only am I correct saying only seven yeah wow <laughs> I mean what were your expectations before you went out there and you've got two bronze medals there on your lap and um, what were your expectations of your gorgeous little horse uh, well I only got her about well a year ago from the Albergs and she was my second horse because Midnight was my first horse and I was going to aim to go to Tokyo on Midnight. So it was suddenly Zuki and I didn't expect to come away from a medal. And even a couple of months ago, I went to Holland and I was coming uh, fifth to the competitors out who were out in Tokyo. So to then go and beat them <laughs> was really good. And what do you think it was Was it that kind of got that medal for you? Obviously, you're exceptional riding, but do you think that you saying about the team atmosphere, was it just such a strong team? Was it inspirational being there and being with everyone that elevated you to these levels? Yeah, everybody helps. And just being on the podium with Lee and, yeah, it just makes it all fun and games, really. George's <laughs> ride was inspirational as well. Oh, I think your mic's gone. Turn me on, George, George, we've lost a mic. George, turn me on. <laughs> Hello. Oh, there we go. They're Have trying to shut me up, aren't they? <laughs> I know this is one way. Yeah. George has never met you. And I, uh, <laughs> not yet. I, uh, <laughs> I refuse to go through the media zone until I watch George's test. And yeah, I do obviously believe that um, that uh, it was a great atmosphere, and we supported her as much as possible. But watching her ride was inspirational. I mean, we all fell in love with George's horse, and. Um, and yeah, her ride was phenomenal. She deserved a medal, do you know what I mean? As an individual in that arena, because the support staff were truly amazing. But when you're in the arena, it's a very lonely place and you have got to come up with the goods as an individual under all that pressure and limelight. And Bobby, um, I think we can say from back home and watching you guys how inspirational it is, isn't it? And, and the support for you guys was huge. And it, it's great having these guys on the stage. I'm just in awe. Absolute awe. I mean, you absolutely amaze me, you really do. And I was so excited to meet all of you. And Sophie, I you know we've done Europeans together and things like that. And it's amazing to be able to sit back and watch what you've all achieved. And I think what was such a big thing as well, and I think why it was so lovely for us, is that having the COVID, nothing for the year, and all of a sudden you going out and excelling and doing so amazingly. Just talk us a little bit through, obviously, that you had, was it, what did you name it? A quarantine camp? What, what exactly was the name and what happened there? It was um, pre-export quarantine for the horses, so they had to do seven days quarantine. Uh, most of the European horses went to Arken and quarantined there and then flew from Liège. We, um, the British team, organised for us to do it in Leicestershire, um, so it was quite convenient for us, especially for the people that wanted to go back home. Um, but it was a really nice week of um, training doing the last little bits and um, starting to spend time with each other as well because we hadn't, hadn't really seen each other for the rest of the year because everything's been so upside down. So, um, yeah, we, that was kind of our last bit of preparation before the horses went to Liège and then we flew. And having lots of hot chocolate. Lots of hot chocolate. Is that your favourite yeah. bit? Yeah. Literally. Hot chocolate. <laughs> everywhere, George, everywhere Georgia goes, it's just about hot chocolate. <laughs> oh, I think George is sneaking back in with a microphone for you. Well done, George. Round of applause for George. <laughs> Thank you very much. George. It's still not working, George. What have you done? What have you done? It's OK. Um, can I just say, while, while we're waiting for George um, to turn you back on, OK, this is, this is taking a dark route that we're not allowed Told to you. go down. Um, we've had a great Hello. question from... Hello, George. Oh, he's back in the game. We've had a great question from Sarah Clark, um, who's watching. Hi, Sarah. Um, does being a trainer breeder put more pressure on you, and has it changed your approach to competing? That's a fantastic question for Lee. 
Uh, no, it's just even more of a nice warm feeling, really, that um, that Breezer was bred at home at my parents and, and, and produced. And um, it just makes it even more special. But I, I think whatever horse you're on, if you, if you don't have... If, if your result goes beyond your expectation, it's it's an amazing feeling. I am very proud, and I've I've obviously got uh, Breezer's half sisters, Dialetta, that are two to the World Equestrian Games, and uh, it was awful what we attempted in Inter Two yesterday at home, and we got to the end of it. So boom! So two homebreds that for different reasons. She'll never make a power horse because she's like a Ferrari, and she she can't walk properly when you need her to walk properly because she wants to piaf, passage, and do canter pirouettes all at the same time. But yeah, just very very. Very proud that I planned to breed because I couldn't afford the quality of horses that even power dressage needs, never mind to be here at the Nationals and see all the quality horses here. Um, and that that plan came off because not many people um, managed to breed like two advanced horses, at least, um, then produce them and campaign them. It's a, it's a fairy tale. Um, I mean, you're nodding away there, Bobby. There's a lot of nodding. Um, he's, he's talking a lot. But I get, I'm guessing for you as a trainer, knowing about these horses, because they are exceptional horses, I'm guessing it must be so interesting to hear what makes a good para horse compared to... Um, I mean, these horses, just the, uh, is, the temperament must astound you. I think as well, absolutely, the temperament has to be amazing for you. But it, like you were saying, Lee, the walk... That is really important, but... Um... We still need an engine. We still need the spark. We still need the cadence. Power dressage now has moved on from doing a very basic walk trot test. I used to be embarrassed think, because I can ride at an advanced level doing a walk trot test, but actually trying to be the best walk trot test in the world is a bit more difficult than just doing a walk trot test. And the level now, um, I don't know the percentage difference, but there wouldn't have been much of a percentage difference between gold and even 10th place within our sport because the level is phenomenal. You need a fantastic walk and a fantastic trot but you need a equivalent to a bd national kind of small tour trot you can't you we can't we won't win medals just on oh that's on the bit and it's in front of the vertical and it's going around sweetly the, the judges now want the equivalent to a to our grand prix championship test but it just happens to be a walk trot test so a lot of people ask us what 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 is what do you need for a power horse and it's all the ingredients that you need and what spencer said this morning i was watching his interview like as we're getting older we want them to be sane but they've got to go in them in the arena like we own the center to line. So it's finding that balance, isn't it? And Sophie, let's talk a little bit about you because you didn't go out on the horse you'd planned to go out. How did that, how did you feel mentally about that? I think firstly, it was kind of getting to grips with the fact that my top horse had got an injury. I think anyone here that rides, you know, knows the turmoil that you go through when you have an injury and you trying to rehab them back. So that was like the first bit. And then to have to make the decision that he wasn't quite ready and to take my second horse, who Don Cara is a very talented horse, but I've only had him, I got the ride from Amy and Tracy Woodhead um, nearly two years ago, but he's very um, sensitive and he's quite hot and can be quite tense. So I, I've spent the year trying to um, prepare him the best that he could but at our first selection trial at Solihull in March we got 62% because he was so tense and so it's kind of been that building through the year to try and get that um, more confidence um, and then going into the games I was it was such a different games for me because the other games I've been literally gunning for gold like nothing else would have been good enough um, and going in with this horse, I was quite prepared in my mind that I the, maybe the best that I could do was fourth on, on a good test. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a very different approach that I took, and especially um, he's because he's tense. I almost have to work so much on my breathing and my almost slightly meditative state to be so calm for him, which in a pressured environment where you're at games, there's quite a lot of people like expecting you to do well, even if I didn't expect it of myself. Um, yeah, it's quite a difficult, because obviously your, your adrenaline goes. I mean, I was watching um, Lee and Natasha for the team and my heart rate was like 120 and I'm like, just stood still. <laughs> so like trying to get my heart rate down to ride, you know, in the competition arena, it's th that's a whole new skill that I've had to learn. Um, and then the emotion after my first test, I literally 
broke down as I was coming out of the arena because of just the, I suppose, the emotional tension that you carry what with injury and we've had the whole COVID situation and you're you're planning and you're you're aiming for that game for so long and then there were so many literally not just bumps in the road but craters where <laughs> you just don't think volcanoes you've got to get over so um yeah I, I i was crying so much like i mean and my trainer was like what is wrong with you <laughs> you're like it's the heat out here yeah. it's the heat <laughs> it's just so warm. just kept crying so um, sophie's heart rate was 120 but uh Breeze, we did the championship test, and then two days later we did the team test, but he had the prize given from the championship test that really, really upset him, and we had grooms holding him down, he piaffed and passaged out the arena, which I'm going, that's great for the future, but really not now. So he went into the team test actually shaking underneath me. He was really nervous, so I nearly stopped my lungs, I nearly stopped my heart, I held the reins with fingertips and just prayed that he'd just do a nice test. So her heart rate was up there, mine had nearly stopped with fear. <laughs> and um, Georgia, these two have obviously, they've been in this situation before. Did they give you any pearls of wisdom or were they, was the heart rate too through the roof? What was the advice these guys gave to you before you went into your test? So were you like, do you know what? I'm calm, I'm going to teach these guys a few things. Uh, well, in the freestyle. Yes, oh. yeah, you're on. Uh, um, it was thundering in the background when I was warming up. And thundering? I was like, yeah, lightning, I was like, like proper light. What? <laughs> I don't leave the house if that's happening, let alone ride a test under lights in Tokyo. And George's <laughs> words while she was warming up to, in the radio to me were, oh, that's not fair. Lee's going to get really cool pictures with lightning in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, George, I'll let you concentrate on what you're doing. And B, it's going to be lightning for you too. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I think, yeah, I just, the more people talk to me and make it a bit of a, a laugh and make me laugh before I go in, the more I find it more normal to do what I need to do. <laughs> and um, Sophie, I'm guessing, because you guys are based together and you train her, um, if you were a crying wreck for you, how were you for her? Because often trainers say it's harder to watch someone you train. Were you a sobbing, were people picking you up off the floor? What was going on? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for the for the individual, I was actually fine. Um, but for the freestyle, like she rode every single step of that freestyle. And I think maybe for the first test, you've got no expectations. So she didn't really have anything else to ride off. So for the freestyle, like she was gunning for those medals. I mean, but slow down. I like literally my whole time is spent telling Georgia to slow even down. Even had breakfast telling her to slow down because we knew that was what Sophie was trying to get over. So not not she wasn't eating fast, but just slow down because she she was going in the dressage arena turbocharged. You know, like the fear of trying to get to the end of the test even before you've started. Yeah. Like Georgia, you're riding really well. Just slow down. Yeah. Just slow down. But no, I. I I had I have to call George's test on a on a headset, so I told her to, at the end to go down the centre line, G halt salute, and I literally was holding back tears as I was asked, telling her to salute because you talk slower as well to go <laughs> A and to <laughs> yeah. counteract her speediness. <laughs> Working, <laughs> yeah. not not to don't tell her the not. next movement just yet. <laughs> no, so yeah, it, she she's amazing and. Both her and the horse have got except, exceptional temperaments, you know, to go in and be cool, you know, under that pressure and, you know, just ride for a life in that sort of environment because it's hard enough to do it at home, at the regionals, at the nationals, but at a Paralympic Games, yeah, she just... And well, if, I, if I did well, I was allowed to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so pancakes got, and a Starbucks. He was so generous. <laughs> If you did well, you were allowed a Starbucks. Yeah. Wow, that's like now you've advertised that you should be a, you should yeah. be sponsored by them. Yeah, you should have as many Starbucks, Starbucks as you as you need. Yeah. Literally, that's all, all she wanted. Right. I'm all, I'm drunk with the French, and she's having Starbucks. And like a hot chocolate from Starbucks. Yeah. Not a medal. If you do well, you don't get a medal. You can have a Starbucks. Starbucks. I know. It's 32 degrees, and all George's <laughs> bloody drinking is slushy and hot chocolate. She swore. <laughs> she swore, and it wasn't me. Sorry. Just getting that one in. I did not swear. <laughs> okay, too so much time with him. I spoke a little bit um, to you earlier. Okay, about was there anything memorable or fun, and you just laughed through the whole entire thing. But there was a Facebook photo, Sophie, of you. Well. You better uh, carry on with this, actually. I mean, Facebook photos. This allowed was you. a Facebook photo. So well, it, it was on Channel 4 also, so oh, I, yes. it's just something... I don't know what you're talking need. about, I don't think. 
therapy for for having. You need to explain. The audience is looking at you quite vaguely, they Sophie. They had an all night, and yeah. Well, it was the last night. So this was the last <laughs> night of competition. We were celebrating. Lee was invited onto the last leg after drinking with the French French wine. <laughs> and it was five um, o'clock in the morning. It was five o'clock in the celebrated morning. Celebrated all night. We thought it was a great idea at that point to surprise the last leg. Lee was in my bed looking like the king. <laughs> and uh, he just said to them, do you want to see my medals? And then... We I revealed three girls under the duvet. That was pretty... With his medals. But, oh, well, well, that wasn't the photo we were talking about, but yeah. there we go. Someone told me that we were going to get told off by the British Paralympic Association, but I think he gave Paralympians a really good kind of down-to-earth image and a question because we're, we're perceived to be a little Very bit posh and a little bit hobnobby, <laughs> and there we revealed three girls under the duvet and where Sophie was resting her head, you don't want to know. Which is um, what I need therapy for so, for the rest of my life. I'm sure it was a lovely pillow. Anyway, moving on. Um, the BPA was going to tell us off, and the next minute they shared the tweet. Amazing. They loved it too. I love it. I love it. I'm guessing that's the last time, though, Sophie, you're going to be under Lee's Absolutely duvet. The last time, yeah. Um, and also, um, you guys are kind of used to it. I've been interviewing you for years. I've been very drunk in after a European Championships with you, Sophie. And uh, But, Georgia, this new fame, um, I asked you, were you on Instagram? And... Uh, can I just say, David Beckham has liked her Instagram posts. I'm just like, did that blow your mind? Does that like beat all of it? Beat the medal the lot? Yeah. Uh, well, I was having a bath after I think my test, and I was thanks for the details there. Having a bath, to lovely. Through, just to put it into context, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I screenshotted it and sent it to Zoe straight away because yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Wait, uh, Georgia, Georgia's comment to me was. So I've got 400 followers now on Instagram, and then <laughs> and then sent me the screenshot. And David Beckham's liked my post, and I was literally like, "What the hell?" And so I went on, and it was it was legit. It's happened. So yeah, that's amazing. And have you been enjoying this side of things, the media side of things, the press, and the attention that you and your beautiful little chestnut have been getting? Yeah, it's not my favourite part. I'd rather go in and ride, but um. Yeah. And my job is safe. I'm okay then. Yeah. yeah. And clutching your bronze medals. I love it. Um, guys, you are just fantastic. I mean, does these this gold medal, you've won so many, Lee. You've won a bucket load as well, Sophie. But going in, knowing that you weren't necessarily the favourites, does this just make these medals special and after the year we've had and like just lifting our spirits? I think everyone will agree these medals yeah. really lifted us. It was a fairy tale and I these gold medals probably yeah do mean a little bit more than any other we were all quite emotional we were all missing friends and family that couldn't come out and support i cried after my first test you cried after did you cry are you too hardcore she's so hard she was looking for a starbucks, starbucks. yeah she yeah, oh, hot, hot like, chocolate she was looking for david beckham <laughs> um but no it was really emotional and once as we've said there was no there was no expectation on us so to come for me to come out home with gold uh, for us to come home with uh, the team gold yeah it was it was a fair, on non-championship horses because yeah and uh, obviously we had Natasha Baker on the team as well and the Sophie Christensen couldn't make it but it was just yeah it was just a fairy tale I think I think it for us because we had to ride maybe the horses so differently to times before like we had to literally draw on every bit of experience that we'd had I think that's what made like I was so proud for Lee after that team test because I knew it wasn't easy, but literally every every minute of his experience, you know, showed in that arena and he absolutely smashed it for the team and gave us a great start. So, um, yeah, that, that made it really special. And then little things like Breeze was upset with the clapping. So I had a little watch speaker uh, from Equidance and I played that all evening played clapping. I found this YouTube with 20 types of clapping. I mean, I can hardly clap anyway with these hands and arms, but, um, and he was really upset at first and people were going, oh, are you sure you should do that? Cause it's kind of like his calm space. I was like, no, he really needs to get used to clapping because people, people clap when they shouldn't clap when you're at a Paralympic games and they stand up and they all should be waving and not clapping. And then the freestyle test, 
totally different way to uh, ride the, um, well, Breezer was giving me a totally different feeling. And we lit I literally put my leg on and uh, I rode the extensions the best they could be. So yeah, as Sophie said, we didn't, we didn't just go out and ride the same test three times. It, the horses were giving us totally different feelings that we had to change and react to. And Breezer actually gave me the best test it, it, that he's ever done in power or able-bodied um, on his freestyle. And it was phenomenal, it was a dream. And I didn't care. And I said that to the national, to the world media, I said, I don't care where I got placed because that my horse just gave me everything he possibly could out there. And that, as a rider and a trainer, what more can you ask for? Doesn't matter if he came last, he didn't, he won a gold medal, good lad. But um, I didn't care where we got placed. And that was the love, I think, and the bonding that we had out there with those horses and with his team and, and um, the whole competition was amazing. Just amazing. And. Um, is there, there's a lot of people watching. It's quite scary when you turn around. Has anyone got any questions for the team? I know people hate this, but I've got a microphone. If anyone's got any, now is your chance to chat to these legends. Has anyone got any questions? Go on, be brave. Anyone, be brave. We're dead shy and we had to sit up here. They are very shy. No, no one's brave enough. No one is brave Everyone's enough. laughing out loud, rude. Well, I will say it on behalf of everyone. Um, it has been a tough couple of years for the, for the nation, but... Um, I just even seeing you in the kit. I love the kit, Lee. I'm really embarrassed now because this is what we're told to wear. I I, I, I arrived looking like a bloody Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why I'm not wearing it. Georgia, did you love the kit? Was that like, did you love getting all the, you get glasses, shoes, the lot? Yeah, it's, it's very cool. <laughs> it's very cool. But guys, thank you so much. On behalf of the nation and everyone here, um, you lifted our spirits. Seeing you come home, home with Team Gold and the plethora of other medals, you are amazing. The glasses are wonderful, Lee. Thank you very much for, for showing us. I told off and not wearing Adidas glasses out there. Um, but thank you so much. It's so wonderful to watch you. And I think um, the fact that you went on young, inexperienced horses and you weren't scared to go out there and just go for it. Um, just a shows bit I was a little bit scared. I was petrified. <laughs> a little bit scared. Um, but you, you properly went for it and you came back with the goods. So thank you so much. Thank you for being on the stage today. Thank you for um, supporting guys us. Guys will be out um, in the parade later. But please join me with a big round of applause for our Paralympians. Guys, you are fantastic. Thank you so much thank for you. being on the stage. Thank you.